Hey everyone, it's Jack from whatculture.com. Now, I was gonna do something big and special for fast count number 50, but instead, uh, a lot of people on Twitter pointed out that I should do something big for fast count 52, because that would mark, of course, the one year anniversary, 52 weeks in a year. You don't learn nothing here on the fast count, but, uh, then some other people pointed out that I should do something special for Fast Count 51 because I missed a week at Christmas and then Fast Count... Uh, so I don't know. I'll do something special either next week or the week after. But this one's just a normal Fast Count, or is it? Because we've got all kinds of crazy wrestling news to look forward to. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. This is Fast Count 50. <laughs> Let's start off with all of this week's WWE news and there's only been one name on the minds of everyone associated with the world of wrestling over the past few weeks, since the start of the year really, and that of course is Kenny Omega. Will he go to WWE? Will he stay in New Japan? Will he just do whatever he wants? Will he retire and play video games forever? Because he, he might, he's, you know, he's an interesting man and luckily he appeared on the Wrestling Reserve Radio uh, and said a few words about the situation which I have here. He said, I will not be at the Royal Rumble, ending that speculation. I don't want people to have this false hope of me showing up in the Rumble and then not being there and being disappointed when there's a fantastic match happening with fantastic competitors. I don't want the lack of me being in that to disappoint people. He did also say that he hasn't yet signed a New Japan contract, so we don't know where he'll ultimately end up, but he is flying over there either later on this month or in February to discuss things, and he says it's looking positive unless you wanted him to go to WWE, in which case it's not looking too positive. But one more thing, Kenny Omega loves working the fans. And while my gut feeling is that this is legit and that he is gonna re-sign with New Japan Pro Wrestling for at least another year, uh, he could just, it could be a massive work. Um, who knows what's going on in the minds of Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks, they love, they love tricking people, those devious f***ing bastards. Next up, there's a lot of news about the Royal Rumble. Uh, there was also news linking the Royal Rumble to the WrestleMania 33 card where Meltzer revealed some things that, you know, Vince McMahon apparently had in the works for WrestleMania 33, some of those matches that could be, you know, true. Uh, but I'm not gonna report on that because I know a lot of people like to avoid spoilers in the run-up to WrestleMania. And you can Google it if you, like, you know where to find them if you wanna find out that sort of news. You just type into a search engine of your choice. Maybe Ask Jeeves, maybe Bing. Probably Google, probably Google. So instead of, you know, that WrestleMania news, I'm going to instead bring you two mini bits of Royal Rumble news in the lead up to Sunday's spectacular. Um, first of all, the six women tag team match between, let me get this right, Mickey, Nikki, no, Mickey, Natalia, and, oh, who's, and Alexa, Mickey, Natalia, and Alexa against Nikki, Naomi, and Becky. Oh, that was tri- That's gonna happen uh, on the pre-show now. That's been moved to the pre-show alongside uh, Nia Jax versus Sasha Banks and the Raw Tag Team title match between Cesaro and Sheamus and the club. And also, uh, the Royal Rumble in 2018 has been announced as returning to Philadelphia where the event was infamously shit on by the ECW locals. Uh, and also because it was just one of the worst Rumbles in, not just in living memory, but ever, ever. But hopefully 2018's is better. Finally in WWE news, Triple H took a conference call earlier this week where he discussed NXT and the effect the brand split had on the brand. He told Raj Giri of WrestlingInc.com that it did affect NXT negatively, but everyone's working to rebuild it. When I say affected it, it's because obviously a lot of the top talent was poached by the Raw SmackDown. And that's kind of the problem with NXT at its heart. It is a sort of self-defeating promotion. You know, it builds talent and then they're taken by the main roster brands. They have to build other guys up again, but you know, it's a cyclical process. And I think we might see a very strong roster come around again in the near future. Uh, also in NXT news, uh, Shane Thorne from TM61 has been hit with a big knee injury in a pre-tape match with the Revival, and he'll be out for seven to nine months, but apparently, on the plus side, his surgery was a complete success. Now it's time for all the news from elsewhere in that agonizingly unpredictable world of professional wrestling, and where better to start than Impact Wrestling, TNA, uh, where this week on Impact, there were two bloody really good matches. Told you it was unpredictable, it was actually a really good show. First of all, we have to report that there is a new TNA World Heavyweight Champion, and his name is Bobby Lashley. It's Bobby Lashley, lads. It's Bobby Lashley, but it's all right. It's okay, because it was a really good match. He and Eddie Edwards had an absolute war of a 30-minute Ironman match. Bobby Lashley won 3-2 in the end. Uh, Eddie Edwards had him in kind of a guillotine choke, and the referee was doing the whole lift and drop the arm spot, and Lashley kept his arm in the air on the third drop. 
as, uh, as time expired. It was a very unique ending to an Ironman match, and it, it put both guys over strong. They both looked really good, despite getting numerous pinfalls on each other. Neither guy looked weak, and you know what? I can't really complain about Lashley being the TNA World Heavyweight Champion if title matches are going to continue to be this good. It was the best TNA match of the year so far, without a shadow of a doubt. Secondly, the women's match. We have to talk about the f***ing women's match. It was... it was... Brutal. It was really brutal. It was Rosemary versus Jade for Rosemary's Knockout Championship, and there were thumbtacks, and there was a table spot, and there, like, there was a big superplex through the table, which eventually won Rosemary the match. You know it's a hardcore match when they get one of those boards out. I don't know what they call just a board of wood with barbed wire just kind of chucked on it. You know, it's very ECW. It, you know what I mean if you've seen what I've. You know what I mean. It's just a board. And it's just it's like someone's just gone, eh, there's a foreign object, there we go. And just draped barbed wire. It looked, you know, uncomfortable. And, and obviously they did moves on each other into the weapons. The thumbtack spot, she landed like around the back of her head. I'm rambling and rambling about this match because it was really brutal. Both women got a big reception at the end of it. And it also carries on the storyline. Gail Kim came out to check on Jade after she'd lost. Rosemary misted her in the face like Tajiri would and then scuttled away to the back. So there's a storyline developing there as well as a great match. You know what? New ownership may turn Impact Wrestling or TNA around. It might well do it, you know? I'm certainly more positive about them than I was for the majority of 2016. Okay, I'm, you'll have to excuse me for preparing myself, but this news is from Mexico, and as far as I know, no one really knows about Mexican wrestling in the office, and I was asking everyone for advice. I was like, Sam, what's happened here? And he was like, I don't really know. I was like, Blomus, what's happened here? He was like, I don't really know. I was like, Joe Hendry, local hero, what's going on here? And he went, don't talk to me, Jack. Don't talk to me ever, ever again. And I was like, I thought we were friends, Joe. And he was like, I've still not forgotten. But fortunately, I have in my hand a piece of paper, and it's my notes of what's happened. So, AAA News, Pentagon, Junior, Garza Junior and Daga showed up on the Crash Promotion show in Tijuana. Uh, that means that they've sort of flaunted their contracts with AAA. It's a coup essentially led by Conan, if you remember him from his days in WCW and Lucha Underground of course, where he was mercilessly killed off in season one. <laughs> or season two. Season one, I think it was early doors. Um, Basically, this mirrors a kind of a situation back in 96 where Conan again took Triple A's top talent and just kind of left in a sort of Game of Thrones betrayal move. It was awesome, I imagine, but, but like real life. And um, back at the time, um, it was run by a man called, as I furiously scan my notes, Antonio Pena, who is sadly deceased now, but was apparently a creative genius. And he helped Triple A recover back then, but nowadays it's not run by him anymore because he's dead. And now, the promotion may well just be absolutely f the, the, the sort of the talking point, the heart of the matter of this new story is that AAA, one of Mexico's two big promotions, might just just end, it might just be gone. And we don't know what's really gonna happen with Pentagon in terms of AAA and Lucha Underground, that whole partnership as well. It's a messy one, but it's important to mention in the news, but I wish it wasn't a new story because I know f all about it, but I hope I've done you proud, I hope so. And finally, we're gonna keep the one takeaway format that I've been running with for the past couple of weeks, just to keep things short and succinct, you know. Uh, and this is basically, uh, do you think the Royal Rumble is going to be a good show? Not just the match itself, the whole card. You've of course got Cena v Styles. That 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 should be match of the night, I guess, because Rumbles are really inconsistent. But Cena and AJ are consistently pretty good. You'd expect that to be match of the night, I think. What do you think is going to be match of the night? Do you think it's going to be a good show? And do you think it's going to be a good Royal Rumble match as well? You know what? Throw that one into. What do you think? Tell me what you think about the Royal Rumble, and please don't be mean about my physical appearance, demeanour, or lack of facial hair. Thank you very much. So that's all for this week on The Fast Count. Now, you can follow me on Twitter at JackTheJobber. What? Do some sirens and explosions and shit, Go on. Thank you. Keep them going. Thank you, that's enough. Yeah, that's right, I got a new Twitter handle, bitches. Because the old guy who ran Jack the Jobber is now, you know, well, he's, he's obviously, he, he was probably getting like a lot of notifications and just got sick of it. So he's got rid of that. I'm now at Jack the Jobber on Twitter. No more underscore, forget that. Don't look at that, it's Jack the Jobber. Phil, are you still Chambers Philip? Yes. Not as exciting, is it really? Never mind. We'll see you soon at Jack the Jobber. At Jack the Jobber. Feels good.
We're never going to stop doing magazines called wrestling. It's time for issue four, the first magazine of 2017. To celebrate, we're looking back on the wrestling year that was, including end of year awards for best and worst matches of 2016, best and worst wrestlers of 2016, best and worst feud, and many more. Also, a gigantic career retrospective on AJ Styles, Dixie Carter's crimes against wrestling, and how WWE should have booked the road to WrestleMania 2016, written by this sexual Catherine Wheel. As ever, the magazine is available now to order at shop.whatculture.com for the love of God, buy it.